in the study of Psalm 146. Uh, Psalm 146, let's pick up reading verse number 5, and we'll read down through the remainder of the chapter. Psalm chapter 146, verse number 5 tells us, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down, the Lord loveth the righteous. And I don't know about you, but when I read this, it kind of sounds to me like God's pretty busy, is He not? Amen. Notice here verse number 9. The Lord preserveth the strangers, He relieveth the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked He turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the Scriptures tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to assemble together, to come together as a body of Christ to worship thee in spirit and truth tonight, Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for the uh, breath of life you give us to enjoy creation. We're thankful for the health you give us to be here tonight. Lord, we're thankful for the fellowship and for the songs of Zion, uh, dear Lord, that have already been shared and sung tonight, and for the fellowship and to be able to, to laugh and enjoy being in the house of God tonight, dear Lord. We just thank you and praise you for your presence already being felt here tonight, dear Lord. And uh, Father, I pray now as we look to the bread of life tonight, Father, I pray that you'd feed our spiritual souls. Lord, I pray that you'd give us spiritual food tonight, dear Lord, to help us grow thereby. Lord, I pray that all of us here tonight would open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word, that we'd be closer drawn to thee and, and, and uh, learn something to help us in our daily walk with thee. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you'd help me as I preach. Give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought, clarity of speech, to preach the truth and love tonight, Heavenly Father. And Lord, if there's one here tonight that does not know thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you draw them to yourself, convict their heart of sin, draw them to yourself, convict their heart of sin, and I pray that they'd be saved tonight before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've already done. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. And we love you tonight, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, we pray now that you bless in the remainder of the service. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. Uh, if you remember Sunday school uh, this past uh, Sunday, uh, we started with verse number five. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. And we talked about the Lord being a very present help in time of need. And no doubt the Lord is our helper tonight, amen. And uh, uh, I'm thankful for other brothers and sisters that can help and can assist in time of need. Uh, but the Lord truly is our helper, and the Lord will uh, uh, use other people to be a help to us and to minister to us, amen. And sometimes use circumstances and use other things to minister to us and be a help to us. But the Lord is the source of all help, especially right. to His children, to the believer. Amen. Right. And we talked about that uh, uh, Sunday morning. Whose hope is in the Lord is God. And beloved, I hope that your hope's not Amen. in politics. Amen. That's right. I, hope, Amen. I pray and, and hope uh, that, uh, that your hope is not in religion or good works, right. uh, but that your hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen, uh, beloved, Amen. Uh, I've heard people answer this in regard to the salvation. You witness to them and you ask them this, and I know Brother Frank and Brother Warrior's probably heard this many a time, but as many doors as they knocked on, uh, uh, are you saved? I've heard people respond when I ask that question, well, I hope that I'm saved. Hey, beloved, the salvation that God offers to you and I is not a hope so uh, salvation, amen. Uh, beloved, it's a no so salvation according to the book of 1 John. These things have I written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Uh, beloved, salvation is not based upon what's taking place in the world. Salvation is not based upon how you feel. Salvation is based upon the fact of the Word of God. Amen. And uh, beloved, I'm thankful that uh, my hope, if you will, in regard to salvation is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, he is that hope. That's what I'm looking forward to. A present expectation of a future event. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I look forward to the Lord's return, and I look forward to being at rest and being at home with Jesus Christ in heaven and being reunited with other friends and family and brothers and sisters in Christ 
that have went on before us. Praise be to God. Amen. And so, uh, thank God for that blessed hope. Amen. And notice here in verse number 6, uh, uh, the uh, 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 statement about creation, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is. Uh, beloved, uh, God is the creator of every living being and creature. Uh, I touched a little bit on this in Sunday school uh, this past Sunday. Uh, a lot of people today are obsessed and consumed uh, with things that deal with the paranormal. Uh, beloved, they are demons. Uh, beloved, Satan is real. Demons are real. By the way, God created them. Amen? We know that there was war in heaven. Uh, Satan used to be the angel Lucifer, the angel of light. But uh, he let pride creep in, if you will. He rebelled against God. He said that his name would be exalted above the Most High. And so he got a, a band of a, a, a angels, if you will, to follow after him. And the Bible records that there was war in heaven. And so, beloved, uh, 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 the devil used to be an angel by the name of Lucifer, the angel of light. And, of course, we know the, the fall of uh, Lucifer. Now he's Satan. And now he's trying to deceive multitudes uh, and pull them away from the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, but beloved, everything that's in existence, whether it's demons, uh, whether it's the devil, whether it's little green men from Mars, whether it's a Bigfoot that's rolling the Smoky Mountains or out in the Pacific Northwest, if there is such a thing, if they are real, I can say one thing with an assurity. That God created whatever it is. Amen. It's just that simple. Right. God Amen. created every living Amen. creature and being that is in existence or will ever be in existence. Yes. Uh, they say that there's universes and galaxies uh, past the Milky Way galaxy. Yes. And uh, they're obsessed with finding life on other planets and other galaxies. Well, if there is life out there, if there are UFOs that are real, and if there are gray aliens that are traveling from universe to universe, God created them. It's yeah, just that right. simple. That's right. He yeah. created every living creature. Beloved, that's why the Word of God is so much under attack today. Uh, you won't hear this truth in our secular schools anymore. Right. Uh, beloved, they'll teach you that creation came by chance, came by evolution, uh, came by... Uh, came by a, a big bang, if you will, and then everything just fell into place. Uh, let me tell you something. Man can't even create a car that'll work right, right. let alone create life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Amen. so, uh, uh, beloved, uh, that's just an attack of the devil. That's why the Word of God is so much in, under attack. In the beginning, God created yeah. the heavens Amen. and the earth, Amen. and then we have record of all the other creation after that. And I know there's people say, well, you know, this other stuff, paranormal stuff is just a figment of the imagination. It's not recorded in Genesis, not recorded in the Word of God. And listen, I'm not going to argue with you. I just know this, that when the Bible says God created everything, God created everything, whether we can prove it exists or not, doesn't make any difference to me. I know who created it, amen. Amen, that's right. And so uh, if a lot of people get that settled in their hearts, it takes away a lot of confusion in the world today, amen. Right. Uh, but notice here the next thing, and this is where I want us to, uh, to center our thought and attention on, is the latter part of verse number 6, which keepeth truth forever. Uh, beloved, God is the source and the origin of all truth. Uh, beloved, that's why His deity is under attack. That's why His Word is under attack. Uh, beloved, people want to try to change the truth of God's Word. And beloved, if you don't believe me, go read Romans chapter 1. Who has changed the truth of God into a lie. And let me tell you something. God is truth. God's word is truth. And beloved, God is absolute truth. And it's unchanging truth. Amen. Uh, beloved, you uh, uh, look at the source of uh, uh, media reporting today. Not everything that you hear, not everything that you read, don't take it as being absolute truth. It could be slanted. It could be politicized. It could be an outright lie. But you pick up the Word of God and you can rest assured that every word that comes from the mouth of God is truth. You can take that to the bank. Amen. Out of all the things that God can do, there's one thing God cannot do. And that's a lie. That's a lie. And so when God says it, 
You can accept it. Yes. You can believe it as absolute truth. Amen. Yes. Uh, the Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verse number 6, uh, I cite this passage a lot. I quote it a lot. But there's a lot of truth in it. Amen. 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 Yeah. In John chapter 14, verse number 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. And beloved, uh, right. living here in East Tennessee and living in the South, there's a saying that I used to hear all the time. Now, I don't hear this quite frequently as much as I did in my middle school years and my teenage years, if you will. But my mom, when she was talking with somebody on the phone, and no telling because she had a lot of conversations, but she'd be passing along some information, and, and out of respect for mom, I'm not going to say mom was gospel, but I'm just going to say that she was passing along information. But she would say, I... Uh, I tell you, and she'd go through and she'd say this, and I tell you, that's the gospel truth. Have you ever heard that saying? Yeah. Ever heard that saying? That's the gospel yeah. truth. Maybe you've heard some of your parents, or maybe you said it yourself, or other people say that saying. And beloved, when you say it's the gospel truth, you set a mouthful right there, and you're saying that that is the absolute, honest, unrebukable, unshakable truth. Listen. Amen. 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 But you know, uh, thank God that He is the God and the source of all truth. Amen. Yes, you know, the devil, he's nothing but a liar and a deceiver. Yeah. He's a liar and the father of it. Amen. Now thank God for our Heavenly Father that when He speaks to us, He will lead us and guide us into all truth. That is one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit of God, the Comforter. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us uh, in Titus chapter 1, verse number 2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Uh, beloved, when that person comes under Holy Ghost conviction and the Holy Spirit's drawn them unto himself and they cry out to God, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, when a person comes to the Lord with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and they're sincere and they're genuinely wanting to get born again, and they cry out to God for salvation. Amen. Hey, God will save them. Amen. 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 Thank God for that promise of salvation. Amen. 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 Uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 10, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Uh, beloved, I, I, I can relate with that, and I believe all other preachers can relate with that. We, we seek out acceptable words, words that will be received as truth. Amen. Amen. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Uh, beloved, uh, I tell you, we all have opinions about different things, do we not? Uh, but beloved, when I get behind this pulpit and I make a statement, I try to base that statement upon the truth of God's Word, and I try to give you the supporting scriptures to support the truth with the truth. Amen. 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 Uh, John chapter 17, verse number 17 tells us, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Why do you think there's a thousand different translations of the Bible today? Because they want to change the truth of God's word and change it into a lie. And let me tell you something. When you change certain pronouns, when you leave certain certain uh, pronouns out or leave certain nouns out. It changes the meaning of the Scripture. And one of them is when it records that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. And then in another translation it says Jesus Christ was born of a woman. It changes the meaning completely. Yes. Yep. And you say, well, preacher, right. uh, he, a woman give birth. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ's blood was never defiled with man's blood. Right, right. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And Mary had, not, had never known a man. She was a virgin. Right, right. And beloved, Jesus Christ's blood was holy blood. Yes, it was. And it was blood that was not defiled by man. If it was, then he's not Jesus Christ. He's not the Savior. Amen. Because all of us that's how we inherit our sin nature. It's through defiled blood 
Wherefore is by sin entered the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. For that all of sin, we get that nature from Adam. Yes, sir. And so just changing that pronoun and that word makes all the difference in the world. And people, they say, oh, it don't make that much difference. It, uh, it's just translated and it all means the same thing. No, it does not. That's a lie right straight from the pits of hell. And beloved, that's why I stand so much upon the King James Bible. I believe it's the infallible, inerrant, inspired, God-breathed yeah. Word of God for mankind. And so, beloved, I know today that uh, uh, this movement that's taking place and people getting contemporary with the Word of God and with Him, let me tell you something. We're going to stay old-fashioned. Hey, when you stand upon the truth, you don't have to change. Amen. Right. Praise right. be to God for that. Uh, Psalm chapter 146, verse number 6 tells us, Which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that therein is. Again, talking about, uh, uh, talking about creation, which keepeth truth forever. Now let me tell you something. Keepeth truth forever. And, uh, I don't know about you, but that ought to bring some comfort. Yeah. That ought to give you some reassurance yeah. that the truth will never change. Amen. Uh, yes. Beloved, that's Amen. why I get I get disturbed when people say, well, you know, uh, that portion of Scripture is mentioned over in the Old Testament and it just doesn't apply today. Now let me tell you something. God made a plan for salvation before this world was ever created. And let me tell you something, in regard to the truths of God's Word, it applies just as much in the Old Testament, it applies just as much today, and then it'll apply just as much now, two million years from now. Because the Bible tells us, forever, O oh Lord, is thy word settled in heaven. Praise be to God. God's not going to change His mind. And if it was sin in the Old Testament, it's sin today, and it'll be sin tomorrow. Yes, sir. Why? Because forever, O oh Lord, is Thy Word settled in heaven. Yes. Now listen, politicians change their mind all the time. That's true. Businesses change their policies all the time. Yeah. Human beings and individuals change their mind all the time. Yes, you know, I, I told Christy, I, our anniversary was this past week. And we were sitting at a restaurant on our honeymoon. We just left the church. Finally got to where we could take a, a, just a breath of fresh air and relax for a few minutes. And we were sitting there before we checked into the hotel. We were sitting there. I looked up at her and I said, I'm going to tell you something, Christy. I said, you know, I'm not one of these bushy type guys, real sentimental and real romantic and all that kind of stuff. Now, I've, I've changed a little bit now through the years. I got a little soft in me, you know. And everything. But I told her, I said, let me tell you something. I said, don't be one of these now that want to hear I love you every 10 seconds out of my mouth. I said, I said, I told you I loved you, and if I ever change my mind, I'll let you know. And well, you know, we all need a little bit of reassurance every now and then, don't we? And so uh <laughs> I said, some of y'all looking around and move right along. But you know, the fact of the matter is, uh uh uh, 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 God has not changed His mind in regard to what is sin and what's not sin. Amen? Uh, uh, thank God for that. But I told Christy uh, <laughs> the other day, uh, I was talking about this, and I don't know what got into her to go do this, but me and her, down through the years, I'd write a note, you know, and I'd tell her I love her or tell her how sweet she is, how pretty she is. I'd leave her a note trying to you know, put a smile on her face for the day. She'd do me the same way. Uh, sometimes I'd get her a caramel iced coffee and I'd put it in the refrigerator and I'd try to give me a piece of duct tape and some piece of paper and put a note on there, I love you, and that sort of thing. And guys, you ought to do that now. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but uh, some of y'all look like you're feeling guilty out there. I ain't gonna mention no names. Uh, but anyway, she went and got a chalkboard. And I said, what you get a chalkboard to hang on a wall for? And so now she's got a chalkboard with some chalk and an eraser, and she's writing me messages about it every other day. And so she put up her, and she said, she calls me Pooh. That's a nickname, all right? So <laughs> <laughs> She said, Pooh, I love you. <laughs> all right, don't, I know Larry, I probably should have said that. I don't know <laughs> And so, anyway, uh, she put that up there. Well, I let that go for about a day and didn't say nothing. 
And so I said, I want to see how much she's paying attention to the board. And I wrote underneath it, I love you more. And then finally the next day she said, you love me more? No, you don't. I love you more. <laughs> oh, but let me tell you something. Oh, but God gives us something from His Word. Yeah. He gives us truth. Yeah. And it's forever settled, praise be to God. Right. He'll not go back on His Word. He'll not change His mind. He won't be like a politician. He won't be like another individual. He won't be like a company policy. Hey, He'll be truthful forever, praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Oh, the Bible tells us that. Psalm 119, verse nine, number 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Uh, in heaven. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hey, he's an unchanging God, praise be to God. You know, uh, I think about my niece's two little boys, Kate and Zane, those twin boys, and Lord, how mercy, how many times they've already changed their favorite football team. You know, it's whoever's winning to their four and everything. I remember my nephew David and everything. He started out being a Dolphins fan. And then the Dolphins hit a couple of bad years, and so then he went to the Redskins. And then he got over on John Elway's boat, and he was a Broncos fan. And everything, Lord only knows who he likes now and everything, but, <laughs> you know, uh, everybody's always changing and changing with the times. But God changes not. And His Word and the truth changes not. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's why we can stand on the promises of God. We can proclaim the truth of God's Word. And we can have the assurance of salvation. And we can have the assurance that heaven will be our home. Why? Because thus saith the Lord has declared it. And it will never change. Praise be to God. And so keepeth the truth yes. forever. Yes. Praise be to God. Yes. I'll tell you what, when people, some people, I'll say it this way, when some people tell me things, I'm already a little bit nervous. <laughs> I already begin to sweat a little bit. Well, I wonder how long they're going to stand by that. Yeah. You know, it's like going to buy a car and the salesman comes out there. If you'll, if, you'll, if you'll buy this car right now, I'll let you have it for X amount of dollars. And you just don't want to turn loose of that dollar. You don't want, to, don't want to plunge into debt or whatever the case may be. And you go home and you sleep on it. And then you wake up the next day and like, I'm going to go get that. That's a good deal. And you go back down there. Well, hey, that was yesterday. I can't do that for you today. I didn't know you wanted to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Brother Larry has been down that road, amen. <laughs> but aren't you thankful that God is the keeper of truth, amen. the source of truth, yes. amen? Yes. Praise be to God. Amen. And so we'll continue on in our study next week. We'll pick up uh, with verse number 7 next week. But at this time, if the musicians will make their way over to the instruments, I'd like to invite everybody, if you would, to stand, please. Everyone stand. Everyone's heads bowed. Everyone's eyes closed. I'll ask a question here tonight. Maybe there's someone here this evening and the Holy Spirit of God has spoken to your heart. And you're here tonight and you've never been saved or you're not for sure heaven will be your home for eternity. And friend, if you're here tonight and you've never been saved or not for sure heaven will be your home for eternity, I'd like for you to 